Hello my friends and welcome, we have some interesting news coming from the front lines. Russia decided to attack Vuhledar again. Let's zoom in more to this area. So just the last winter they advanced from Pavlivka towards the Vuhledar itself and they were totally ambushed in those fields. But what they did today is another nonsense. They tried to advance from Mikhilsky towards Norse. Basically they want to cut the Ukrainian army in Vuhledar unable to take it under control. But as usual the Russian assault was finished from the very beginning. Basically they sent infantry, they landed the infantry from the armored vehicles and they sent some of the tanks, so the convoy was quite long. On this video we might see 7 of the armored vehicles and totally there were 10 of them. They start to advance, then the first vehicle was targeted by Ukrainian artillery. We may see at least 2 of the modified Russian T-72 B-3 tanks with the grills on the top, plus modified in the same way the Russian infantry vehicles. After the first vehicle was targeted, the light traffic jam appeared over there and later on more shells went to the place. The same story happened with other vehicles and with other vehicles. Here we may see at least two of the Russian armored vehicles totally caputed by Ukrainian artillery, but some of their tanks were damaged and just abandoned. And this one just stuck. And here what is left from the other Russian armored vehicles and tanks. Total disaster. Well, this tank doesn't exist any longer, just look at it, almost vanished. It was also equipped with the mining plague on the front. This is kind of beautiful picture and here we may see one more tank with the mining plague on the front. I'll zoom in for you and also here we may see the classical turret space program. Couple of more screenshots from the Russian demolished convoy, so we already saw this tank and the turret separated here as well. But hopefully our guys will be able to trophy some of the Russian vehicles and tanks. Many of those vehicles were precisely targeted by our drone army. My friends, more of that stuff is available on my telegram channel, you may find it in a video description just below, or if you can, you may scan the QR code available on the screen. Honestly, my friends, I don't get it, why Russia started to disperse their forces around the front lines. They need them in Obdivka for the assault attempts to get it encircled. I thought that they would send everything to that place, or to defend their territory on the south in Zaporizhia direction. But it seems like they're sending their forces all around the front lines. We have one more failed Russian assault. It happened in Kupensky region, not far away from Erlanga. So Russia tried to advance from this place towards Ukrainian controlled territory, but failed again. Ukraine is ready with artillery to kick out Russians at any time. Let's look at some photos or screenshots. So this video was filmed on a drone. As you can see, the huge kaboom at this particular place. For me it is hard to say what kind of the Russian forces were used for the failed Russian attack, but the geolocation was confirmed it is near to Oryanka. Because of the fight near to Oryanka, this area now goes to the grey zone. About Avdivka, Russia continued to attack using their forces, for now unsuccessfully. Well yes, they were able to take this ground recently, yet not able to establish the robust bridgehead ahead. On the south they all also move forward, taking this territory with the same success. The situation for Ukraine, I would say, not that bright as many of the media resources say. We repelled the Russian attacks continuously and successfully so far, but still they were able to take the ground, even with those huge losses. Any other army would have stopped their assault because of the severe losses, but Russian army continued to accumulate resources and their goal to encircle Avdivka at any coast. And also what makes the situation for Ukraine even more difficult because there is the single supply road in this place from Avdivka town to Orlivka. In the winter time it's the only connection. We have some of the rumors that the general commander Zeluzhny plus some of the other Ukrainian generals are asking President Zelensky to withdraw the army from Avdivka, but those are just the rumors. The conversation or those intents are not yet being confirmed. But in any case for this day it's not a catastrophic situation for the Ukrainian army. We have the supply lines, Russian army mostly was stopped. What worries me that Russia continued to accumulate the forces not far away from Avdivka, also in Donetsk city, probably for one more strike. 
Some sources say that it could be up to 30,000 soldiers. Russia definitely has the huge human resource. So it could be something similar that we saw at the very beginning of the Russian assault on Avdivka on 10th of October. So this video, new video was released showing those events. So Russian convoy was just uh, devastated over there, but it was the very beginning. The Ukrainian army successfully repelled the attack, but was forced to move out from the positions to avoid the fighting in the trenches. As for this day, there were no any new drone videos released from the place. What worries me about Avdivka that Russia already started to build the significant bridgehead on the captured territories. They are unusable for now, as I say to you, so Russia is still vulnerable, they are unable to create the bridgehead very fast, but they will do it soon. It means that in a nearby future they will send more reinforcements and those will be quite safe under the ground. So for Ukraine it would be a very hard task to kick Russians out from that place. The strategy for them is to send reinforcements very fast and later on use them at some certain period of time. And they might do those ways again and again. You may compare it with the intermediate camp for the mountain climbers. What worries me even more that at some certain points they were able to cross the railroad. The road is located on the northern part from Avdivka town. So Russia is building their bridgehead somewhere in this area and later on they will try to attack Ukraine again. But they already crossed the railroad and here near to Stepova should have been the Ukrainian robust defense line. But there is I think nothing. Based on the image that I've just saw and based on the report from the Ukrainian military journalists, who say that the proper defense actions were not done to defend Avdivka properly. This town is basically on the front line since 2014. It is bordering the self-proclaimed Republic DPR. Yet the robust defense was built just in this area. It seems like no one thought that Russia might try to encircle the city from the other part. And even after Russian full-scale attack on Ukraine, the significant defense lines were not built in this area. I wonder why. Based on the photos we have just some of the trenches and that's it. Well actually I thought that the situation with the defense of Avdivka is much better. By the way I'm not opening any kind of the secrets. This is the public information published by Ukrainian war journalists and basically you may see it from the drone videos or from our enemy. We should have built something as robust as the Russian defense lines on the south. Well at least the Ukrainian artillery and the drone army work 5 out of 5. The best performance that I have seen so far stopping the Russian aggression even without significant defense lines. Instead of Bakhmut, Avdivka is very important. At first I was sure that Ukraine is capable to defend it no matter what, but after some information and after Russia starts to accumulate lots of the forces for one more jump, I'm not sure about it right now. But still there's the greater chance for Ukraine to defend it and keep under control rather than lose it. I think that all of the remaining autumn campaign and full winter campaign Russia would try to encircle Avdivka. I'm not pessimistic, I try to be realistic. By the way, Russia was able to cross the railway just with infantry forces and artillery support. No vehicles were used. Ukraine also targeted the electronic warfare system which Russia deployed not far away from Donetsk. So it was before and this is after. The standard Heimers missile was used to target this place. And even the cars nearby are smoking a little. As for Robotina and Verbova, no changes were published today. Let's speak about the Ukrainian landing operation across the Dnieper River. We have some certain update from the area. Ukraine sends more reinforcements to the other shore and constantly targets the Russian positions in the area. We have the video from the Ukrainian drone with a thermal camera. So it flies over Krinky village and drops the TM-62 huge explosives on the Russian positions. So Ukraine creates the space for the future advancement. It could be the part, the beginning of the big landing operation in the area, or it could be just down to deflect the attention of the Russian army. According to calculations, Ukraine has almost 40,000 soldiers on this part of the shore. Russia has a little more, around 50,000. Yet those figures might not be precise. So what are the steps if it is the big landing operation? Firstly, what we witness right now is to create many of the bridgeheads all through the river. The infantry and special forces are mostly used for that. The region should be secured enough to withstand it for quite a long time. 
Next, several of the Panton bridges should be built across the Dnieper River, several, because those could be targeted by the Russian artillery and the aviation gliding bombs. That's why we also need to put the air defense systems in the area and the counter artillery raiders for our artillery to target the Russian one. Usually we don't have the problem with that because our artillery is way more precise compared to the Soviet or the Russian mate. Also it has the longer range. So before building the bridge, firstly get rid of the enemy, enemy artillery and put the air defense, at least RST. The next step, and it is the most risky one, is to land the forces across the river. It is go no go operation, very risky, because if Russia cuts those bridges and all of the supplies, our army would be just trapped on the shore. So to make this step successful, our army needs to advance very fast, very, very fast to cut the enemy's roads and enemy's supplies. For that we need the long-range missiles and artillery. But the main factor is the speed, otherwise our gas would be just trapped. The long-range missiles would just demolish the Russian command centers and ammunition warehouses. We might take significant ground in this area, which makes it the safe place, so Ukraine will send more and more reinforcements. And further, it might use the forces to advance towards Crimea, because Russia doesn't really have the significant defense lines in this place. I already told you about the possible big landing operation in Crimea. Crimea, mostly we need it from the political perspective, that is what Zaluzhny said in his interview to The Economist. We need this advancement to show to our allies that Ukrainian army is capable, so we need more weaponry for the next future successful operations. Unfortunately, it works like that. So, there are two scenarios from what I see. Landing in Crimea, taking the town, city or one of the Russian military bases, or landing across the Dnieper River, taking the vast land in a few days and going to Armansk, the border with Crimea. It is understandable that the big Ukrainian counteroffensive stalled right now, even though Ukraine was able to penetrate the Russian defense lines in several of the places. Zaluzhny in his interview said about it. That is why I am almost sure that Ukraine will conduct some sort of the landing operation very soon. The Ukrainian drones also search and target the Russian boats all across the Dnieper and many rivers nearby. This is happening in Kherson Oblast. Breaking news, the House of the Representatives voted for the military support of Israel. The United States of America might potentially transfer 14.3 billion dollars. Yes, we are not speaking about the actual money transfer from the United States budget to Israel. We are speaking about the military projects, the Israeli support. The military help for Ukraine wasn't included in this voting. Just to remind you, the White House initiative was to vote for the military support of Israel, Ukraine and Taiwan simultaneously in one package. There was some information that Biden might veto this bill in case it is split by the Congress. Well, we'll see how it goes. The new speaker of the House of the Representatives said that military support of Ukraine Ukraine will continue, but what is necessary now is to support Israel as soon as possible. He also said that they are looking to increase the military support of Ukraine, but with more control established over the funds which are transferred to Ukraine and Ukrainian projects. Well, actually, I do support the idea of controlling the United States funds which they transfer to Ukraine. What we know that the United States of America will transfer the new military support of Ukraine the day after tomorrow, but they are using the funds from the previous agreements. It is really hard to predict that the next military help for Ukraine is possible. Russia lost one more Suhoi 25 attack airplane near to Avdivka. Just for the last 20 days Russia lost seven of the airplanes of that type close to Avdivka. Russia also has the dramatic losses in their long-range air defense systems like S-300 and S-400. That is why they moved out most of their radars and systems to Rostov on Don airfield. The record number 10 of the air defense systems, all of them are S-400, were spotted at the same place. A perfect spot for the aerial attack. We even have the coordinates of the place and the range of those systems, it's quite long. The targeting range of the air defense system also depends on the altitude of the flying target. So if you fly not more than 1000 meters over here, it is safe. 
So potentially the Ukrainian airplanes might fly over Donetsk, Gorlivka and Mariupol, but there Russia established the other types of the air defense systems, the shorter range, which might also target the Ukrainian airplanes. The green sector targeting altitude is 100 meters. And here we may see the map with the Russian air defense systems and the Russian bases. Russia also moved out the helicopters from Berdansk, the airfield that was attacked by attackers, to the other places. In his interview, Valery Zaluzhny said that Russia modernized the S-400 system, it is now ongoing the testing with the new types of the missiles, so the effectiveness of the F-16s is under the question. There is the group of Republican senators who asked Biden to send the Atakims missiles to Ukraine with a longer range. Now our Atakims missiles have the range up to 100 miles and have the cluster munition warhead we need the standard warhead and the longer range to cut the Russian supply lines, including Crimea. Happy to see the good Republicans presented in the United States Senate. There will be some of the official talks between China and the United States this month in the United States. The topic is basically the world security. Vladimir Putin signed the withdrawal from the nuclear test ban threaty. It means that Russia definitely wants to nuke Russia, performing the real nuclear test. In that case, it could be the first nuclear test which the modern Russia performed since the collapse of the Soviet Union. We witnessed the new Cold War, and I already showed you in one of my videos the point where Russia prepares for those tests is on the northern part of Russia in Nova Zemla. Kremlin could be the better place for it, but not this time. Just a couple of words about the situation in Gaza. As you can see, Israel completely cut the northern part and advances already inside the city itself. This strategy was very well predicted. I just thought that they will advance to different parts, not just into the single one. The advancement is much faster than I expected. However, Hamas possessed resistance, now it's some sort of the partisan fight where they use the underground tunnels to ambush the Israeli Merkava tanks and other stuff. We have even the video showing the Hamas man first-person POV camera view where he just ran to Merkava tank planted this shell and ran away, so the shell exploded, causing the damages to the tank and later on this man took the RPG and finished the tank. By the way, this is the RPG-7, quite the advanced weaponry. It means that Hamas has the constant supplies from Russia and Iran. I wonder why Israeli tanks do not have the infantry support, it is really terrible for them. This video was definitely like some sort of the Call of Duty video game where a guy was Easy go and easy made his job. Without any kind of the resistance, he went back to his tunnel and was safe. By the way, there was not just this single tank, there was the tank in the front and tank on the back. No infantry support, nothing. As for me, it is very strange because there are tons of the bushes around where Hamas men might hide. Definitely it is the tactical mistake to advance very close to those bushes without the infantry support. It is no go. So it doesn't matter if you have the very advanced weaponry compared to your enemy, you still need to use it properly. IDF published the video of the cruise missile shut down. It was launched from Yemen and was flying to Israeli territory. It was was shut down, as they say, from F-35. Also, there was the activity of the United States Air Force over Saudi Arabia. According to the United States intelligence, Russia is getting ready to send the air defense system to Hezbollah. Well, they say that Sirius Assad agreed to send Russian missile system to Hezbollah with Wagner Group help. As you can see, Russia still uses the Wagner name to cover their military support of the other countries or terrorist organizations. My friends, now don't forget to press the like to this video. Also, if you want to support my job, you may check out some of the links in a video description just below. Special thanks for my Patreon supporters and also the sponsors of my channel. Guys, you are awesome. I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.